about radio. Hi guys, uh, this is uh, one of my toys for today and uh, this is the capacitor off my magnetic loop antenna that I built back in 2009 and uh, I cut the loop for use on 17 meters but I've also had QSOs on 20 meters and 40 meters with it so not a world beater but uh, it's a little aerial that you could easily put together um, but always this uh, tuning capacitor is a, a bit of a devil because I've uh, tried to tune it remotely with uh, bits of string and all sorts of stuff uh, but my little motor drive is going to go on here um, uh, this is uh, 2 times 43 picofarads and uh, so I use those two in series for uh, 21 and a half picofarads total um, and there's, a, there's a, a high voltage on the capacitor of the loop uh, antenna uh, quite surprisingly high, I can't remember what it is offhand but it's, uh, it's going to be over a thousand volts uh, so you know the ceramic base um, and uh, what I need to do is uh, isolate the motor drive uh, this is going to be the little motor that I have and uh, in this case if you've seen the other videos um, this is one of the uh, 12 volt 3 rpm motors that I've got so slower motion than the uh, 5 rpm motor in the last video uh, I'm going to be using this as um, uh, part of the chassis or the, the frame this is a bit of uh, uh, this is macrolon but you probably call it plexiglass or something like that um, I've run out of stock for um, uh, the, making the rotors and the rocker arm so I'm going to cut it out of this piece of uh, what's that I think that's again uh, oh, that's 10 millimeter al aluminium so I'm going to cut that up and make some uh, bits out of it uh, what else have I got here? Scribe, uh, the vernier. Oh, I don't know if you've seen one of these before. This is uh, an automatic dot punch and it's uh, it's adjustable so you can have a, uh, what you'd call a light dot or a heavy dot and uh, you line the point up on the where you want to make the mark and then you simply press it and it puts that little dot there. I'll give you a close up of that. So I'll just uh, put another dot there and uh, I say it's adjustable so you screw this uh, knob at the end I've had this tool since I was uh, a teenager and let's put a, a heavy dot and that's really very convenient when you want to get in and do something that's uh, I'll say precision and uh, rather than belting something with a hammer. When I made the last rotor, um, all of these tools were somewhere else and uh, I, I think I wound up using something like a, a, a hilti nail and a hammer. But that, that's, a, that's a really nice tool, very helpful. I said before, you probably know this stuff as plexiglass and I think that's wrong in actual fact. Um, this uh, this material is actually uh, say it's macrolon but it's uh, it's polycarbonate it's uh, what they uh, sometimes make um, vandal proof windows out of you can throw bricks at this stuff whereas i don't think you can do that with plexiglass okay you've got a uh, hole for the capacitor and uh, for the motor there i've got a larger hole there to accommodate this uh, uh, bush there yeah, that bearing so that will fit there and I shall bolt through there and then the uh, capacitor will mount there and I think what I'll do is to stop this from moving I'll probably just put a little bolt uh, through the macrolon and through that uh, capacitor frame or I may um, I'll come up with something uh, I don't normally like drilling proprietary items as uh, if ever you want to replace it uh, as an ex-service engineer I hated it when they modified uh, parts in the factory um, and then you get on site and you find you've got a modified on site and you haven't got the same tools as they've got in the factory so uh, I would normally sort of design something that 
fitted on here that fitted on this part to stop it from swiveling but uh, as I'm doing this for myself I may just bang a hole straight through there but uh, that's the story so far by the way what I meant to say is I'm not working to um, uh, a finite plan I'm using materials that I've got out of my junk box but I do know that the distance from the center of the capacitor to the center of the shaft that is 50 millimeters because that's that is a critical measurement for what I'm setting out to do um, the uh, the rest of the divine mentions I'll give you uh, uh, at the end of the video but uh, the size of this uh, bit of macrolon I, I haven't got a clue what it is I, I haven't even measured it it's um, uh, let's have a look it's 46 millimeters by uh, 98.7 or something like that uh, millimeters and what is it it's five millimeters thick but it's like none of that matters the only critical dimension for this is from the center of that hole to the center of that hole I've got the uh, motor and the capacitor mounted there and uh, I decided to put a, a bolt through there um, so I just tapped the back of that and uh, put a little internal cog washer under the uh, head of the bolt there now I'm going to set to and uh, cut out my uh, rotor and rocker arms out of this and uh, I, I haven't got a, a machine saw here so uh, I'm, I'm going to be using uh, a hacksaw and uh, I just want you to see that you don't need a fabulous workshop or a lathe or, or anything to to make this uh, this mechanism and uh, I'm literally making it out of rubbish out of my junk box so I'm just going to set my vernier at uh, about nine I don't know, eight and a half millimeters there and then do that which is not good practice but now I've got a a nice uh, line to, to cut to. You'll notice I uh, I cut the metal that way rather than cutting it that way. I know if I tried to cut it down the length of it, uh, I I would run out. I know that. But by starting off with the saw uh, uh, like that. Um, at least I can only run out across the uh, the width of it there and uh, I've cleaned up that face uh, in a fashion uh, with my dreadnought file that bit of string is uh, my measurement for the focal length um, the dreadnought file doesn't clog up if you try to file aluminium with uh, a fine file like this then it will clog up also use that dreadnought to uh, clean up the edge of this um, polycarbonate as well so it, it just acts like uh, like a plane that's a dreadnought as compared with uh, an ordinary file so now I'll uh, set about putting uh, the holes in there uh, I want one of these to be uh, 19.13 millimeter centers and the other one to be 20.06 uh, that's theoretically what, it's <laughs> what it should be I've marked this out and I've drilled two pilot holes there so that will be one for the capacitor shaft and one for the connecting rod pivot point but um, I'm going to drill larger holes in there but by drilling the two pilot hole first I can be reasonably sure that uh, I'm going to get them in the right place if you just go in with a big drill it could just wander around a bit what I didn't say was that I've left a, a, a large uh, length of metal there because I'm going to drill and tap down there to uh, put a, uh, a, a little uh, bolt through there to hold this and um, so it, because it's aluminium it uh, it'd be very easy to strip that thread just clean that up with the scalpel
that's the uh, little rocker arm in place so I'll, uh, I need to actually get the sort of angle sorted out once I know where the appropriate mechanism is and I've got a locking uh, uh, knot and a bolt there and uh, this hasn't got a flat on it the shaft so uh, I may uh, I may put a flat on there once uh, once I know where to put it this is the uh, little uh, rotor arm so the distance um, from center to center there is 19.13 or thereabouts and the distance from the center there to there is 20.06 or thereabout. The important thing is that this distance is shorter than that distance. I've got to make the connecting rod that goes between here and here and I'm going to cut it out of this sheet and uh, remember the distance from the center of there to the center of there is 50 millimeters and then on the rocker arm the distance from center to center is going to be 50.3 millimeters or thereabouts the essential thing is that the distance from there to there is greater than the distance from there to there if it's not the uh, the unit won't work Oh, I've had a bit of luck. I've just found this in my junk box, <laughs> that, so that'll save me cutting that strip. In a previous life, uh, when I had a factory, of course, I had a bandsaw, and I, I wish I'd uh, kept all of the scrap that I'd thrown away over the years, because uh, this is just an off cut that I've had for years and years in a in the bottom of a junk box, and and now I'm scratching around for uh, bits of material. I've uh, got the uh, connecting rod on. I haven't uh, cut it off yet because uh, if there's uh, something wrong, then I, you know, I shall simply drill some other holes and not waste any of it. Um, so that's the sort of movement that I've got now. Well, I've got that bolt undone so as it's not clamped onto the motor because it's a slow drive motor and you can't turn the shaft. So that's the operation I've got there and uh, I've got a couple of operational issues that I'll, I'll go through with but uh, if I look at this that's the minimum capacitance so hopefully you can see it's just overlapping there and uh, then um, that's the maximum so I think I can actually afford to make the connecting rod a little bit longer than uh, I've made it here the other issue I've got is I'll just slip this bolt out of here the other issue is that this shaft uh, when in, you consider the alignment with this other shaft there's uh, uh, there's an alignment issue there um, really this, the capacitor shaft wants to be back there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the shaft off there somewhere this this little uh, rocker arm can afford to move over to there and then it just means that this arm uh, will come nicely over to meet the motor a couple of ways I could address that I could um, I could put a crank in uh, this material so as to kick the motor uh, over this uh, in that direction but I don't want to do that so I, I will cut that shaft and I say I hate cutting uh, something like that but um, this is going to stay like it so uh, I'll, uh, I'll accept that by the way I can't just move that across there to line these two up because if I do um, when uh, when I swing over there oh hang on I might be able to yes looking at it uh, just put a supply on it just about misses so I can just uh, trim a little bit out of there. As I say, I hate cutting anything that's uh, or modifying a, a proprietary item. And there's the finished item. I'm uh, not a hundred percent happy with it yet. Um, but that's uh, the three RPM motor. 